All right, guys, just got back from steelhead fishing at the Alsea River for the first time. And uh, I'm just gonna go over a few of the rigs that I was using today and some of the rigs I plan on using this year. Maybe you'll learn something. Maybe I'll learn something from the comments you guys leave. The first rig I am going to be showing you is one that I already have rigged up. So I'm gonna show this one to you first. This is going to be a simple float fishing rig. My main line is going to be a 30 pound braid. Uh, I would recommend a high vis line, but I didn't find any, so I had to go with this moss green. Still works, it's just more difficult to mend the line. Okay, so you have the main line. The first thing you want to do is put a bobber stop on. Bobber stop goes on first. After that, you put on a bead to stop the bobber from going all the way over the bobber stop. Then Put it through the sliding float. I'm using a one ounce, but they range anywhere from quarter ounce to, I believe, two ounce. After that, tie that braid to an inline weight on one side. Then on the other side is where you tie your leader. From the weight, that leader is going to go about 36 inches, somewhere in that range. And what I was fishing last was this Mad River Worm. This is what the package looks like, Mad River Steelhead Worm, 4 inch, as you can see right there. And I was fishing it on a white 1 16th ounce jig head, red worm, black tail. That's what I was fishing last, but with that float setup you could fish, uh, you could fish eggs, you could fish a jig, you could fish pretty much anything with that setup. Another very simple method of steelhead fishing is going to be spinners. I'll show you how I like to rig up spinners. Super simple, this is gonna be the easiest rig that I'll show you today. There's really just gonna be two main steps to this. First step is tying your leader line to your main line. I like to use what's called a double uni knot. Pretty simple knot if you want a full video just showing how to do that knot. Just let me know in the comment section below. Most people already know this knot, which is why I haven't posted a video about it, but if you want to learn it, I will make a video about it, so just leave a comment. Once you've got that knot tied and your tag and clipped, you cut the end of the leader. However long you want it, I usually run mine about three feet. Cut the end, pick your spinner. What I got here is a number four blue fox silver blade with a purple body. From what I've heard, silver and blue and silver and purple are both really good colors. Tie whatever knot you prefer, clip that tag end, and you're good to go. So yeah, like I said, pretty much the easiest rig I'm going to show you today is a spinner. Still effective, and I'm definitely hoping to get on some spinner fish this year. One other rig I ended up trying was drift fishing. Uh, I'm not gonna show you guys how I rigged it because I kinda did it wrong and I didn't realize until after. But if you're interested in learning how to drift fish, Addicted offers some great videos and I actually just watched a few. Very informative and if you wanna learn how to drift fish, that's definitely the place to go. Other than those three rigs, I didn't really try anything else. Um, I mostly fished eggs, spinners, and at the end I fished that worm. But uh, one other thing you can do is take one of these little addicted jigs and float that under a bobber, or you could even put a tip of a uh, piece of coon shrimp on the end to scent it. But yeah, I basically got all this gear last night telling myself I'm gonna catch a steelhead this year. So I got over $100 worth of steelhead gear. And today was basically learning how to fish the rigs and things like that and exploring a few new spots. I do have a trip planned for next week, so hopefully that will be a more serious trip and we'll hook in some good fish. For now, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Alright, you know what? This isn't looking too bad. It's really not. I was expecting this to be a lot faster. Um, if you guys recognize this, this is where I was catching all those coho um, a couple months ago. 
And today, so you can tell by the title, I'm on my first steelhead mission, solo steelhead mission today. Uh, today is really about learning how to fish different rigs. So I spent probably, I think I got 140 bucks worth of steelhead gear uh, last night. I'm going to try a few different rigs today to see if uh, I can get the hang of it. Not really expecting to catch anything today. Um, I don't even know if they're steelhead in this river, to be honest. I read that it's open for steelhead right now, so I figured I'd give it a try. All right, well, I'm starting out with a float setup with bobber and eggs, as you can probably tell. Pretty basic rig. Um, the main thing right now is I'm going to be experimenting with different depths. Try to get it right in that strike zone. I think my main challenge today is going to just be casting. To tell you the truth, that was ugly. Yeah, casting is going to be a challenge. And another thing is I forgot, well, I didn't forget my waders. I brought my waders, but... I accidentally left them in the truck overnight and they got rained on. More like rained in, I should say. So I got here and I looked and I was like, oh, no, those boots are full of water. So no waders today, unfortunately. This is actually my first time fishing a bobber and eggs. Believe it or not. Been in Oregon three years, never fished a bobber and eggs for anything. So this is, this is all new for me. Yeah, I think the first thing I'm going to get after Christmas is going to be like a 10, 10 to 10.6 10 rod. Better for floating. It's just tough to mend the line, the setup. Got to say though, even if I don't catch anything today, it's nice being the only one out here. A lot better than going to the hatchery on the Alsea and combat fishing. Oh yeah. A lot more room here. This will be a lot better. Right, I am going to call it for this spot. We did hook a couple of small trout, but no, uh, no big fish action so far. Well, fast forward hours later, half the day's gone, but. I am at LC and uh, this is called Missouri Bend Recreation Site or something like that. This is like pretty much the only place I could find with no people so far. I haven't even made it to the hatchery yet. But uh, since I'm new and everything, I don't really want to take up a, a good spot that, you know, someone who knows what they're doing is at. I don't want to bother them. So. Trying to kind of stay out of people's hair today. Um, I might be going on a trip next week with a friend of mine who actually knows what he's doing. And if I do that, that's when I'll focus more on actually catching fish, you know. I don't know, man. I've seen plenty of people fishing, and it's a Friday. So keep in mind that it's not even a weekend, and there seems to be a pretty good number of people out. So I'm really thinking that... Uh, I at least have an outside shot of the fish. All right, I'm ready. Freaking ready, dude. I need a longer rod too. I really need like a 10 or a 10 six. At least now I know. Oh, you guys have no idea how excited I just got. That's exactly why I didn't want to fish around anyone else. But you know what? It's all good. This is how you learn. All right, guys, I'm drift fishing with a bead, hard bead. Uh, it's a pretty funky rig because I forgot the bead knot and I don't have service, so I can't look it up. So I just, I kind of redneck rigged it. But from all the videos I watch about drift fishing, I think I'm doing it right. 
from what I've heard, this should be about the right rod you want to use for drift fishing, just because shorter rod, it's more sensitive. Tell you what, so far I, I do think drift fishing is probably my favorite method, even though it's, for me personally, I wouldn't be able to tell if it's a bite. I mean, maybe I would. Maybe it's a lot heavier or something, but I like the sensitivity though. What an interesting way to fish. I might switch back to the float though. All right, here's the new rig. Same bobber setup I was using before, only I'm gonna be floating one of these Mad River worms. Pink with a, well, I don't know if that's pink, it's more red, red with the black tail. And first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I'm shallower than I was last time. I don't know if you guys like losing rigs, but I don't, despite what it looks like. Honestly, not too confident in the worm, just because I don't really know anyone personally who has caught them on worms. But I'm gonna give it a try. Just trying everything today, so if it happens, it happens. It'd be pretty cool, right? I think it's at a good depth, I'm not getting hung up on the bottom, but it should be deep enough to still get down to them. All right, you know what? I'm getting hang mending the line. Got a little taste of drift fishing. I've already caught fish on spinners before. I think I'm ready. I think the place has been good to me as a practice spot. No one around, so it was a good place to just kind of get the hang of different rigs and how to fish them. Mending the line, and drift fishing, all that, so. I am glad I stopped. And it's good practice for Monday if I go out. 